What does a Canadian note buyer know about the American note market that you need to know? Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us this week for our episode of Note School TV, where every Wednesday when at 11.05 Central Time, we bring you the most amazing guests and the most amazing content. This week is no different, and we'll bring our guest on in just a minute. But before we do, make sure and like this week's uh, episode and also share it with your friends. Uh, Subscribe to our Note School TV channel if you have not already done so. And by the way, hit that bell notification boom so that when uh, you will be alerted right before we go live when every Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time. So uh, also, if you would like to know what we uh, do or more about what we do at Note School, simply go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. Again, noteschool.com forward slash TV. And with that, I want to bring on founder of Note School, chief visionary officer, uh, all around good guy, my friend, Mr. Eddie Speed. Hello, Joe. Well, hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Busy day in our world, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> most every day is busy these days, <laughs> Joe. And we're going to talk about that with our guest. Yes, and we why are. that's true. Like, like what's behind the scenes that's causing that? And we'll have fun with him uh, in talking about that. Our, our audience will love our guest today, I guarantee you. Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, the news keeps uh, morphing, right? Right. So, yeah, uh, today's news uh, news here is, uh, well, it's from BizNow. And loan modifications shoot up showing uh, quote, right? Extend and pretend is alive and well. We've We've been through that before, have we not? Yeah, we used to say that really when they, after 2008, uh, they had all these loan modification programs and they were very ineffective, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, HAMP and HARP and all that stuff, like literally at least 50% of the loans redefaulted. And so in that era, we kind of named this this extension deal as um, extend and pretend yeah, but uh, I, they've tightened it up a lot, and they, I see a lot of reperforming notes that really reperform well. But they're identifying, of course, a segment of the market that they think is uh, not so much. Well, yeah. So uh, you know, while uh, patience may be wearing thin, as the article pointed out, it hasn't uh, it hasn't eroded. So 162 billion worth of uh, securitized commercial uh, mortgage were due to mature last year. And of course, loan modifications on um, commercial uh, mortgage-backed securities and commercial real estate collateralized loan obligations. Damn, that's a, that's a big sentence there. More than doubled last year, Eddie. Listen, the lenders in the commercial sector are kicking the can down the road because it is not to their advantage to go put all the problems on the surface. And if you if you took these loans that they modified and under soft conditions that otherwise they wouldn't have agreed to, then you're going to put the balance sheet of the institution at risk. Pretty simple. Yeah, so I was just highlighting there. So 20 billion of these loans, 542 borrowers secured loan modifications in 2023. That's only a jump of 150% from 2022. And uh, according to Credit IQ, Credit IQ uh, extensions were the most popular form of modification in 2023, a trend that has continued into this year. So, Eddie, I was looking at something yesterday and it was showing an office building in uh, Kansas, Kansas City of St. Louis. St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis, did you see that one where it had sold in 2006? 200 or million and now it sold for 3 million bucks or something? 3.6 million, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, so, I thought yep. that. One. Yep, 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 yep. So we, Eddie and I are kind of simpatico on the same wavelength on, on this stuff, man. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, well, that's, that's our news for this week. And Eddie, I think uh, 
I'm going to drop off and you're going to bring on our guest today and uh, we'll see you guys in just a minute. I'll do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, today, uh, I think Joe's headline was perfect, which is um, we have a Canadian note buyer, but he operates in the American market, in the U.S. market buying notes. He is an expert. Uh, he is looked upon as an industry expert. Uh, and we're going to really talk about this kind of wave that we're seeing right now in the market. And then he is going to have a terrific opportunity for people to come mingle with this, this market condition and mingle with people and, and really rub elbows. So we'll, he'll have a terrific, terrific opportunity to, to give people uh, something to do about it, something to act on. So you guys welcome uh, Mr. Nathan Turner. Hello. Good hello. morning. Good to see you, Eddie. How you doing? Doing very well, thanks. All right. Well, everybody wants to know where you live. <laughs> I live just outside of Calgary, Alberta. So if you've ever heard of the Calgary Stampede, if you've ever heard of the Rocky Mountains, that's where I'm at. Uh, I, I know the man that used to be the general manager for the Calgary Stampede. That's oh, absolutely a truth. Fantastic. Yeah. Fun um, show. If you ever looking for something to do in the summertime. Oh my goodness. It's, 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 it's amazing. pretty amazing. I'll, I'll agree with you. Yeah. So Nathan, you and I have known each other for many years now. Many um, years. Yeah. And um, so you have proven really well. You can do this business from anywhere because you don't buy notes in Canada, right? I don't. I don't. And in fact, I've only been presented two or three times over the last 15 so years uh, yeah. with notes in Canada. And honestly, they just don't make sense. Uh, but that being said, like they're extremely rare. So, you know, you go where the business is and go where the money is. Right. Well, uh, there's there's a couple of things that I really want to emphasize. Towards the end of the program, you are going to have an event in yes. Nashville that I'm going to be happy to be at and be, yeah. be part of the group speaking. Yeah. Uh, and but we want our audience to know about this because we're really going to talk about what I believe is kind of a market wave. Right. Mm -hmm. And and so your timing for this event is really good because we've seen this insurgence of activity mm -hmm. and uh, there's no better time to really have a trade show than when things are really happening. You want to rub elbows with the right folks. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let's, we're talk, about, let's talk about this market wave. What's <laughs> causing it? What, what, why all the inventory of notes all of a sudden? <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, uh, all over the place and different kinds of notes. Um, I'm sure you've seen this as well. Something that I've seen coming up here in the last 12 months or so, seller finance has made a huge uh, resurgence where it, for a little while there, it was still going on, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but we've seen that uh, coming up in a big, big way. A lot of people doing subject to and wraps. Uh, some of them are doing it correctly. And uh, looking forward to working with those kind of folks, but uh, a lot of seller finance coming up. So that's been that's been a big one that I've seen. So the other day I was, did you see this? I was interviewed by Bigger Pockets about sub two. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, so I had an interview with Bigger Pockets. Okay. And um, and it was apparently been really highly publicized in the okay. industry. And yeah. then I just did uh, a master class with Jeff Watson because he has really developed a set of very elaborate documents rel relative to sub two, yeah. kind of a, a real risk management. Excellent. So we're just yeah. trying to help people with the right solutions in the market. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm very familiar with the sub two stuff for sure. And um, I think that, you know, you heard us do the headline with what all the banks and their rolling over these loans that really they're doing it on soft terms. It's not really a real mod. Right. 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 And, and so I think that's what, I think that's what's causing it. I know, uh, you know, I play kind of both sides. I play the mortgage banking side and work off of trade desks that sell, you know, discounted uh, mortgage bank originated loans, just regular loan originations. Right. As well as the seller finance side. And I've been buying seller finance loans since, well, 1980. Right. So and I'm and I, our volume level of notes that we're seeing is clearly drastically up. Um, and I think it's caused I think it's really because of the banks. 
Yeah, I think so. And it's, it, you know, we saw this coming for years in the making. Uh, 2019, we were all looking for, okay, so what's, what's going to be the trigger here? What's going to be the shoe that drops? So when COVID hit, I think all of us were like, okay, here we go. This is it. This is, we're going to see that another wave of defaults. Yeah. And then it didn't happen. And in fact, not only did it not happen, because they, they pumped in a ton of money into the economy to make that happen, uh, to make that not happen, I should say. Um, and then house prices started going up, which was not exactly predictable, but a very interesting turn. Yeah. So it's it's been falsely propped up here for a number of years. Um, and like I say, we're four years, five years behind where I thought it was going to take another tumble. And we haven't seen it yet. But I think it's not... It hasn't gone away uh, and it's not even necessarily gotten better. It's just been prolonged. It's been kicking the can down the road. Here's my philosophy. Yeah. There was a gigantic wave of default during the COVID thing, right? Eight million loans went in default, residential mortgage loans. Yeah. Two million of them are still in default mm -hmm. and six million of them got modified. Yeah. Yeah. The modified loans are the reperforming notes that we're now are, are, are finally hitting the marketplace. Literally. Yeah. Like after all, like after all this time, they're finally hitting the marketplace and the non-performing loans are finally hitting the marketplace. Right. I think right. that's because of the banks. I think the mortgage bankers who have banks that loan them money against their mortgages, I think they're putting pressure on them to go move these assets off their balance sheet. Okay. I think that two years ago, a guy that was seller financing could go borrow money at the bank against his loan portfolio. Right. Yeah. I think he's gotten cut off from that today. And that's why the seller financing is hitting the marketplace. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think the bank debacle, which is shocking to me that it's sometimes somebody will look at us and go, really, there's like a banking problem. And we're like, Oh my God. You know, and then, if they'll go do two hours worth of research, they won't need Joe and Eddie to tell them anymore. They'll know because it's it's pretty Captain Obvious, right? Yeah. There's another thing, though, that I see really spinning our market. And I think this is really, really going to send a wave. And that is, you know, I, I presume it's fairly, it's not a secret to anybody that multifamily and storage are suffering pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it, would, you, would you agree that's fairly commonly known? Absolutely. I, I was talking to uh, an investor just the other day last week and he was saying he's in, invested into two different multifamily projects. Both of those are now in foreclosure and he's looking at maybe getting a portion of what he initially invested back. The, the balloons that are hitting the mark, I mean, the maturities that are hitting the marketplace on that, on those asset classes are staggering numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're going back to the syndications and they're telling the investors, Hey, we're out of capital call because the, the lender won't loan that amount of money on this property anymore. So we got to come in and make a big principal reduction. That's kind of the general, uh, the flavor at the, at the moment, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But here's what I'm seeing. Because of that, people are people that had, were traditionally doing rental properties yeah. or people that were traditionally investing in syndications. They're now forced to go find another alternative. They used to call um, syndications alts, right? They yeah. alternative to traditional stocks and bonds, right? right? Well, now they have to have an alternative to the alts. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're seeing? I'm seeing that. In fact, it's been interesting just in the last 30, 60 days, uh, people that I had talked to about doing investments into my fund where they're at the time they're invested in some kind of a multifamily thing. Now they're coming around going, you know what? Let me see what I can do. I'm looking for something else. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Well, um, I've been doing it. You've been doing it a long time, Nathan. I've been doing it. You see how great my hair is, right? I've been doing it a really long time. Yours, is, I tell this to people. Yours was the first note class that I took back in 2009. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. my first 
real introduction. So, and I've been doing it full time ever since. Um, you know, so this is my sixth real estate cycle. Yeah. And it's pretty interesting. There's some, uh, there's, you know, like we've been waiting for the inventory, right? Yes. We, yeah. we, we've been in a good note buying environment because we haven't had a slippage in residential values. We're, we're seeing a substantial slippage in commercial values and we're going to see more, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it might not be time to dive into the commercial piece yet. We have not hit the bottom of that. No, no, I, we, we, we agree with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But resi values are stable, which means it is a lot easier to price non-performing notes. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to buy with confidence performing notes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, what we've really been waiting on is what we've seen in, in certain cycles in the past. And that yeah. is, boom, this wave of assets really flying into the market. Mm -hmm. And so now we're seeing it. And I guess it's causing you, to, you and I to be busy, right? Yeah. And you know what? I would much rather be busy than bored. So I'm happy for it. It's good. All right. So in the midst of that, all of that opportunity, right? These yeah. burnout landlords now looking for something else to do. Yeah. You have an event that's going to paint a pretty good picture of what another alternative strategy could be. Yeah, absolutely. We're Tell us about that. So looking forward to this. So, so this is second year. My wife and I have run this conference called the Diversified Mortgage Expo. This is actually the ninth annual this year. So it's been around a little while, not too long, but it's been around a little while. And my wife and I took it over last year. The whole purpose for me, besides just making connections and networking, the whole goal for me is have people come, come together so that you can get deals done. I want there to be business happening, uh, not just coming in, you know, rah, rah, everybody goes home and forgets about it. No, let's get together. Let's actually, you know, get to know each other so that we can know, like, and trust each other and, and start doing some deals. So that's, that's the whole purpose. So I really like to drive that home with people. Don't come if you're just coming for a good time. That's fine and good. Go to Vegas. <laughs> We're going to Nashville. Also a great time but we're there for a specific purpose. We want deals to happen. So really, really looking forward to it this year. So I love that. I love that, right? You, it's execution. It's not just talking about it. It's not getting yeah. all excited about something that you never really do, but it's positioning yourself to execute. One of the things that I think is really, I think you and I place a really high value on environment, right? Oh yeah relationships yeah. and environment. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it's, it's events like you're having though, that give people the opportunity to go implement, to go execute, to go be a part of like, otherwise they're sitting back there and they're saying, well, Nathan and Eddie, they've been in the business for years and they see all this wave, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well, go get, well, come out and get in the water. It's fine. That's just it. You know, it, it's, it's <laughs> the difference between simple and easy. Is it simple? Absolutely. Is it easy? Not always, but you know what? It's work. Yes, it's work, but it, the concepts are simple. You can learn them. Anybody can do this. I've done this and if I can do it. Anybody can do it, but you have to come in. You got to get to know each other. We talked about this over and over and over again about how relationships are so, so important in this business. It's a pretty small group. We're, we're not, you know, regular real estate investors where there's hundreds of thousands of them out there. We're node investors. There's a pretty small group of us. So it's so important to get in there, get to know each other. And then you can start working those, those connections. Deals happen. That's how it works. It, it is a niche business. As the old saying go, goes, there's riches and niches, right? Right. Um, and it is, it is, you know, a, a a smaller group than the traditional real estate investors, which doesn't mean there's as much competition when there's good inventory. We found almost always there is plenty for every about one. Oh, and no. we're certainly entering that market. Yeah. I want to, I want to go, I want to go to a step further because you and I've been around the industry. We know a lot of people in it. We've seen people try it. We've seen people 
be really successful. We've seen people try it and not be successful. Correct. And, yeah. And let's talk about how doable the business is today. Extremely doable. Uh, timing, like you were saying, is actually absolutely ideal right now. I think one of the major things that sets people apart of who can do it and who cannot do it is training. This is not real estate. This is it's not the same thing. The, the assets that we're buying are backed by real estate. So yes, we're doing some homework on that real estate, but you're not, it's not a fix and flip. It's not a rental. We're buying financing. So you have to know the rules. You have to know how the game is played because it's a different game. So that's, it's so important that you get out there and make sure that you understand what you're doing and why and how, uh, so that you can start implementing those principles into your business instead of just following a formula. So that's paramount. I have to get some training. One thing that I really like about live events is it's really easy as you're networking. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got you've got two groups. You've got the big operators. Yeah. And then you've got the small operators. Right. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to find out from both sides and particularly the small operators is what have you learned that's made you successful? Mm -hmm. And what have you learned that you would never do again? Mm -hmm. Right. And in an environment like a trade show is just going to make that happen. You're just going to be right there where you can have that conversa conversation. Oh, and I'll tell you, note, note investors love to tell stories. We love to tell stories about, you know, what what happened in this one deal and what happened in that one situation. We love to tell those kinds of stories. And they're they're both. They're, you know, the ultimate success stories and they're the ultimate tragedy stories. We got them both. Uh, so we love to tell those stories and it's just a, such a great way for somebody who's newer to get in and to hear about some of the things that we've learned over the years uh, and how to kind of either model that or stay away from some of those mistakes that we made. Yeah. Sometimes it's the thing that you wouldn't do again is the thing you want to know the most, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like I said, I really, I, the thing that is so great about a live uh, event and I and I feed off of that for sure yeah is is that we get to have those conversations and we get to network and we essentially build ourselves um, a support group right? right and an information group and uh, just connectivity you know I mean I look at your connections around the business you know you probably have a connection in just about every city in the country I'd guess pretty close. <laughs> That's, you know, one of the things as a Canadian coming in, what do I know that other people don't know? You can do it. You can do it from a distance. You don't have to invest in, you know, your backyard. I just say, <clears throat> that's what I do. I just happen to have a really big backyard. So get out there, get to know people. Everything can be done with a computer and phone. So get out there and meet the people so that you can then implement those things. Don't get me wrong, real people are needed in business, but it doesn't necessarily have to be you. Nathan, what's your favorite deal to do? Oh man, that's a tough question. Uh, I really, I just love business. And so any kind of note, I'm, I'm a big fan of first lien mortgages, deeds of trust. I really like con contracts for deed. Uh, for years, I concentrated on non-performing just because there were so many of them. Mm -hmm. I love turning those around. That's a lot of fun for me and helping people get back on their feet pain again. Yeah. Uh, the concentration now for me has shifted a little bit where I'm buying more performing notes uh, into my fund, which is also a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing that. Uh, that's, a, that's a loaded question because there's so much about the note business that I just absolutely love. Well, there hasn't been a lot of non-performing. There is a lot hitting the market this year. So I think you can retool that. I'm, I'm pretty confident you can. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Uh, because there hasn't been a big, in, big supply of non-performing until this year, but it's hitting. And I'm yeah. really a thousand percent confident about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, well, and then the, and, and then the, as you, you and I said, the seller finance side versus the re-performing note side, mm -hmm. both of them are where you're buying a first mortgage and, you know, uh, you're getting a check every month. And yeah. I think it's just, uh, it's, it's kind of ironic that all these forces have pulled together and right now is kind of like where it's coming to that point. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I rem- honestly, in 2008, what really would surprise people is there wasn't a lot of inventory in 2008. There wasn't. It was brand new. And in fact, I think at, at the class that I took from you, I, we barely touched on non-performing. I think we called it bad paper. And yeah. in my head, I was thinking, why would you do that? Why on earth would you want to touch paper yeah. where people aren't making payments? And I quickly learned that there's massive profit in that. There's a lot of opportunity. Uh, that's again one of the things about the no business is there's different cycles and there's a different approach for every cycle. You can make it work. You just have to learn. Well, I mean, the, the like, loans that w- the non performing notes we're seeing come on the market, these are people that went into default. You yes. Know? Well, they say the average loan that is being foreclosed right now, this is according to auction.com, they say the average loan that's being foreclosed right now is more than a thousand days delinquent. Wow. So this so is that's pretty- the loans that we're buying is they were loans that went delinquent three years ago. Yeah. It's that lag time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that pre COVID stuff. This is exactly what we we're looking for in 2019 yeah. where we knew it was coming. And then now it's finally coming through. All right. Tell us about your event. Tell, tell us more specifics. If you will, I want to yeah. get people that are interested in doing this. I want them to get the information. In fact, I want to see them there. Yes. So we are May 31st, June 1st in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, make sure you come early because the night before the conference starts, we actually do an axe throwing tournament. <laughs> true in there because again, we want people to get to know each other, like each other. Uh, and then that trust part, that's you're going to have to work on that yourself. But uh, just a fun environment. People can come throw an axe. If you've never done it before, don't worry about it. It's not hard. Uh, nobody's that good at it, so it's okay. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's kind of to kick off the conference, uh, and then it's that Friday Saturday uh, at the Hilton National Airport. Um, just to there's a free shuttle that goes back and forth there every day, so that's uh, easy transportation, easy to get to. And then you're a short 20 minute Uber ride downtown. Where if you've never been to Nashville, it's the the bridal what do you call that? The bridal party capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Bridal party, bridal party, bridal party all over the place. And it's just, it's an absolute blast. Uh, Lots of live music, lots of good food. It's the place to be. I'll tell you, you picked a great spot. I do love Nashville. I really, really do. Yeah. I'm very excited to go. I've never thrown an ax before, by the way. I'm I'm, I'm in for it. I'll try. I'm I'm a country boy, but I've never thrown an ax. I don't know. It's a lot of fun. And then you'll be there. You're going to do a special breakfast session for us. We're looking forward yep. to that. It'll be great. I am. So we have all of the information in the show notes of how to sign up. Uh, in fact, you've given us a special sign up form and we are so thrilled to be able to offer it to our folks. Yeah. And so here, um, here's the, here's the benefit of that link. Uh, so early bird pricing ends April 30th. If for some reason you're not able to buy your ticket before that, if you use that link, you continue to get that early bird pricing all the way up until the conference. Wow. Yeah. So use the link. It'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty nice gift you gave Note School there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about relationships. So we is. do. It is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good guy. I know him well. He is. Uh, we are not competitors. We are we are advocates of the industry together. Uh, we have a trade show too, and he comes to our trade show, and we're honored to be able to come to his. Yeah. And uh, we are excited. I think your market timing for this this year is could not have been actually more perfect. Yeah. You picked a cool place to have it, and uh, I'm just excited. Everybody's going to be there and kind of be a part of the. Uh, the who blob going on about the business. <laughs> it's well worth it. If you're at all interested in notes or if you're a seasoned professional, it's the place to be so that you can just get to know each other. It's all about the networking. It's all about the relationships. So come and form those relationships and strengthen them. All right. Well, you guys come hang out with us. We are definitely going to be talking about the market. We're going to be talking about the trends and the opportunities. And I know for Nathan and I, our offline conversations have pretty much been a hundred percent like, Oh my God, the wave, the wave is happening, right? We're so fired up about it. We're, we're excited to share that with you guys. There'll be a bunch of people like us that that are living it and have lived through various cycles. But if you have never been around this, 
or you're trying to get back in it, now's yeah. going to be a good time to do it. So you guys come see us at the DME trade okay. show with Nathan Turner and his family. And my, uh, my, my middle daughter is going to be there this time. So that's exciting. That'll be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Joe. Yes, sir. So, what you, Nathan, what do you think about all that? I love it, man. I love it. There's something I need for you to clarify, though. Okay. Yes. Because you said we're going to have an axe throwing contest. And That's then cool. you said there has to be some trust issues there. So, the first <laughs> thing that went through my mind was is somebody going to have to be standing up and you're throwing the axes and not trying to hit that person? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's at a, an insured location. That'll be their call. <laughs> uh, nobody has to stand up and we're throwing the axe there. At, right. Okay. All right. Just uh, want to clarify great. that because if I heard it, somebody else heard it. Um, <laughs> and number two, yes, you guys are so right. People love being at live events. It's just there's no place better to be at a live event, number one. Uh, and number two, people just love getting together and that human touch. We miss that so much during that period of time. We couldn't yeah. do that. So, Nathan, uh, great, great job here today. And, uh, yeah, just look forward to seeing you soon. You too. I'm very excited. All right. Well, Joe, take us home. Nathan, you're awesome. Great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Another successful episode of Note School TV. And again, um, next week will be our monthly update. Man, I can't believe it's already that time, but yes, it will. And uh, want to know a little more about what we do at Note School? Just simply go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. See you next week.